Yeah, the Epstein doc, what did you expect it was going to be? What did you think it was going to be? Uh, Bill Clinton confessing? What did you think it was going to happen? You think it was going to be just Lane Maxwell? She's on the thing like, hello, here's my story. It's Lady Ghislaine. I met Jeffrey. We were both kids. Like, no. It's, you know, one thing I, let me tell you what my biggest takeaway from the Epstein documentary on Netflix was, man, Palm Beach is fucking legit. You don't see money like you do in Palm Beach. Let's not forget that. The East Coast invented fucking money. Let's not forget it. There are three places on this in this world that you see mansions like that. And they are Long Island, New York, the Gold Coast of Long Island, where the Vanderbilt and the Guggenheims and all those motherfuckers lived, Newport, Rhode Island, and Palm Beach, Florida. Makes Bel Air and Beverly Hills look like fucking track houses. I'm talking 50 room stone castles, marble. <laughs> Beautiful. That's the takeaway. You f let's be honest. You do not feel as bad for the kids when you've seen the homes. What do you want to do? Work at the Gap? Shut up. Now, I'm against the pedophilia and the murder. But let me tell you right now, it's a goddamn stunning estate. It's a beautiful property. It's an iconic property. It's a nice place to be raped. Not I am not for rape. But if we went down the list of places to be sexually assaulted, Palm Beach, I mean, the Franklin scandal, these kids were getting sacrificed in barns in fucking Omaha. <laughs> they were eating at Waffle Houses. This is Palm motherfucking Beach. Private islands, ranches in New Mexico, st limestone mansions right by Central Park in New York City. That's what you took away from the... There's nothing else there. There's, I mean, you know the entirety of the, of the entire documentary is, 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 is that they divorce it from any historic precedent of this happening before. And when the Vicki Ward, who's a journalist, who when I had Whitney Webb on the program, and if you watched a Whitney Webb show, you know that... A lot of what you learned in the Epstein doc you had previously learned on my show and more, by the way. And don't get it twisted. Censorship's not all about not letting the information come out, this online censorship. It's about they want to dribble it out and they want to earn all the money off it. So don't kid yourself. It's not only that they don't want it to come out. They want it to come out in their fucking miniseries. They want it to come out the way they, you know, when they can profit off it, okay? That's why when the Epstein story happens... You know, people go in and buy the rights and these these mega Hollywood guys get the rights to these stories because then they're controlled uh, th how the narrative uh, is, is is told to people and the money, you know. So it's not just about we don't want the info out. A lot of it is that. But then some of it's like we're going to have to put some of it out, if not all of it, but we're going to earn the money from it. We don't want all these independent people you know, reaching audiences and, and building any type of equity in their own operations online. We want to control the flow of information and capital to us. So the Epstein documentary, you know, in the beginning, Vicki Ward, who's the journalist, we don't know if we trust. I don't know. Whitney's very skeptical of her. I haven't done any research into it. It does smell a little fishy. She wrote an article about Epstein for Vanity Fair uh, Vanity Fair supposedly refused to publish it. But Vicky says in the beginning, she's like, yeah, Epstein was this Gadsby-like man of mystery. And so automatically, immediately in the beginning of this series, you go, oh, this is a superhuman guy who's very mysterious. He's a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime figure. He's just a character with all these powers that we don't know how he has any of them, but he's just this island, so to speak, no pun intended, unto himself, which isn't true. Okay, Les Wexner is mentioned briefly. It's like in, in, in a very in a very, like, barely important way, and Les Wexner is kind of portrayed as a victim. This billionaire is a victim of Jeffrey Epstein. 
this guy who owns Victoria's Secret and the Limited, and J. Crew, I believe, I'm not sure, but he owns the first two. He's a billionaire. The largest, most expensive residence in Ohio was a victim of Jeffrey Epstein. He just got conned by this dictionary salesman going door to door. Epstein just, uh, Les Wexler just happened to give him a mansion right. in Manhattan and a ranch and all this money. Gave him billions of dollars. He got swindled by Jeffrey Epstein, supposedly swindled by Jeffrey Epstein, a college dropout from New York City, got swindled. All throughout the film, we have to believe that everybody's being swindled and tricked and hustled, and nobody has any clue as to what's going on. And Epstein gets a job at Bear Stearns, and they find out he never went to school, and Epstein talks his way back into Bear Stearns, and okay, maybe, maybe not. We don't know. And he got this job at Dalton, this prep school in New York City, and our current attorney general, Barr, his father, I believe, hired Jeffrey Epstein to teach math at a prep school in New York City, one of the top schools in the country, Dalton. And, and he got that job as a college dropout. And we're, we're, we're asked to believe that all of these things, and not one or two of them, but every single one is this happenstance trickery that Jeffrey Epstein is able to just move through all of these circles of people, swindle them, take their money, Blackmail them potentially, we don't know, but somehow always come out of a shitstorm smelling like, you know, lilies, flowers. He's fine. He's able to do that. We're all supposed to believe this. And we don't talk about any historical precedent for this. There's n it, none of it is mentioned. The Franklin scandal is not mentioned. They do not mention anything about Jimmy Savile, who is a, a BBC uh, presenter um, and a, 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 a heinous, pedophile, sick, sadistic guy. And they don't go into any of this. They don't go into any of the, the credible allegations about the Kinkora Boys Home. They don't go into any of it. They don't talk about the Catholic Church. It's pretty focused primarily on Epstein as this man of mystery. They don't talk about blackmail operations having been used before, sexual blackmail, underage kids being used before. No one brings that up. We're, we're all supposed to just believe that, that Jeffrey Epstein just exists on this cloud and he's floating above everything and that somehow he's able to make this sweetheart deal which lets all of his accomplices, named or unnamed, how insane is that? You're not even named, just anyone that was involved, anyone that had their dick out on that island, you're good. Right. That was the deal. And we're supposed to believe that he just, you know, he just lucked into that deal and it's just what it is, just luck. And, and Charles Gasparino, you know, that guy from CNBC, is like, yeah, you're always in the tombs. It's underfunded. It's underfunded, and the, the people that work there, they're not that bright. You know who's not that bright? You. <laughs> You're not that bright, Charles, because we both know that's poor shit. Right. We know you can keep somebody alive if you want to. This was the highest profile criminal in this country, you know, in a long, long, long time. And the idea that, like, there was no way to keep him alive is just completely insane. You had cameras and cells and the, the guards were asleep and the cameras weren't working. Anybody believing the official story at this point was in on it. If you're on social media going, I think that guy killed himself, you know, whether, you know, you're in on it. You did it. But that was the Epstein documentary. People wanted me to comment on that. There's nothing to comment on, truly. There's beautiful real estate. If you like real estate, as I do. Many of you know have listened to this program. I love real estate because many of the people who've succeeded at it seem to be developmentally disabled. And that gives me hope. When I watch these television shows and I see the idiots that are able to amass fortunes selling real estate, I believe that I could potentially have a second career. Real estate's a great fantasy career that I could just sling homes to people. But that's all you're going to get out of the documentary. The women that come forward are brave, they're, they should be listened to. It's heart-wrenching. The types of girls that they preyed upon are girls from broken homes that had suffered abuse. I mean, it's not. It's worth a watch. It's well worth watching. I'm telling you that. If it wasn't, I would tell you. But it's not going to alter your perception of the events 
There's no real new information. It's still worth watching. But it's not so in between, you know, throwing a Molotov cocktail at Boston Market. Go and check it out. If nothing else but to see Palm Beach. It's beautiful. But that's really what it comes down to is that you're not going to get the real story in any documentary. You're not going to get the real story ever. Sorry. You know what the real story is. You know it was a blackmail operation. People have secret lives. They are provided with illicit substances, drugs, people, streams of money. Um, They're provided with these things and they are to be controlled by people that want to control them. And one of the ways you control people is by having damaging, potentially damaging information on those people. And that's what this is. It's not a huge mystery. Um, You know, when you start realizing that President Clinton, who was the governor of Arkansas, became the president of the United States, Arkansas, you know, at that point, I don't know what the population of Arkansas was, but, you know, I mean, what's the population of Arkansas now? It's like... Three million. So at that point, it was probably one million. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's probably, you know, one and a half, two million people. And then the guy becomes the president of the United States of America. Yeah, it was 2.3 million in 1990, Arkansas. One of the smallest, most inconsequential states in the union. Right. But he ends up the president of the United States. So you start thinking about those things and how does that happen? How does that happen? Is it an accident? an accident? Probably not. You know? I mean, it doesn't mean that everybody's a pedophile. It just means that, you know, you have leverage on people. You know, Obama became the president. Now, how did that happen? You know, these men were talented. They were gifted. They were driven. They had all of those things. I'm not suggesting that either one of them wasn't, uh, didn't possess superhuman abilities. But somebody's got to sign off. Somebody's got to sign off. Somebody's got to loosen the purse strings, open up the vault, and give you all the money. That's what happens. Somebody's got to sign off. Doesn't mean that these stars in Hollywood aren't famous. A lot of them are famous, but they got to get an opportunity. Somebody's got to, you know, open the door. You know, you got to get that opportunity. And that's the same thing as, as, as politics. Doesn't mean everybody gets it from doing something illegal or shady, but... That's certainly a possibility, you know, in the, in, the, in the political realm. Certainly a possibility. So it's well worth a watch. Go check it out. But we know what the story is, and we just don't talk about it every week. You know, I think some of you are disappointed. I just don't talk about it every week. It's, it's boring. We know what it is. Let's figure something else out. We know what it is. We're against it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It's like... People are like, why don't you talk more about talk on spirits? What do you want to say? We did it. We know what it is. We figured it out. I don't know day in and day out what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know why people are like, you got to have a take on the Epstein doc. I, I mean, yeah, you hear it, there you have it. I wasn't expecting from it. I didn't get anything out of it. I mean, that's the take. I mean, guys... You, you, you have to start understanding there isn't going to be a resolution here. There's not going... You, you guys think this is a television show with a season finale or a series finale. And the, it's boom, it's big, it's breaking bad. The last night, we all huddle on the couch. Nothing's going to stop me from watching this. I'll get in five accidents if I have to and abandon my car. Fuck my family. Doesn't matter. I'm getting in front of that TV because it's all coming to... The bill is coming due tonight. The justice is... Sir, it's not... No. It's a show that goes on for too many seasons where you go, ah, oh, this is still... A, yeah, it's still on, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I can't get into it anymore. It's a soap opera that goes on and on and on. And when you start to look at it like that, you you, you just start, you, you, you get away a little bit. You take a little breather. I, I You know, I don't want to do a show every week about the Epstein and this one and then that one. 
I, I, I don't want to break my brain. Many of you have broken your brains. You don't even know it. You think Donald Trump's tunneling under Central Park, rescuing kids. You believe things of which there are no evidence for. I'll tell you what he's doing. We're, in, we're inching closer and closer to a civil war, and he's pouring gasoline on that. But you guys think he's out there uh, tunneling and helping children. And I'm so afraid of becoming one of you. I'm so afraid of having my brain broken. It's how I make a living. I earn money because I have a brain. And I can speak. And I can understand and process things. You know, some of you, I just, I get so scared of becoming you. I'm like, what happened? It's just too many trips. Too many trips to Reddit. Wherever you're going, yeah. the forums, too many trips. And I don't know what happens, but, and it's easy, it's easy to break your brain. I'm not the healthiest eater. It's not like I'm doing like five miles a day in a canyon like Rogan. Like my brain could easily ooze out of my ear and I could become one of you. Like a bumbling lunatic, like a babbling psychopath muttering about nonsense thinking that we were just one week away. Enjoy the show. Yeah, we will. We will enjoy the show. Fucking lunatics.